thank you for this day. Again, Father, we are reminded that this day is a gift, and uh, we just come before you now and ask for your help to steward this gift well and to make the most of it, Lord. Uh, we just ask you to be with us in this time that we have of devotions. Open our hearts uh, to receive what you have for us today. We love you and we thank you for that in your name. Amen. All right, we're in week two of our CEU um, devotional series for this, this quarter, uh, talking about our need for direction, our need for direction. Did anyone have uh, any uh, situation over spring break where uh, you got lost or were in need of direction in some exotic place you went? Anyone? Yeah. Uh, Melissa all over and Jan all over Bali on motorbikes. Uh, thank God for GPS, I would imagine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but we've all been there, right, uh, in, in life as we travel, but certainly as we live. Uh, we come to those places where we say, God, I don't know what to do next. Uh, I don't know what the next right move is what the next step I should take is. I need your help. I need your direction. And the good news is, um, uh, though it is hard sometimes when we are lost to receive this comfort, when we feel like that we don't know what to do, it's, it's hard, I think, to receive the instructions that, that the Word gives us. That's why it's so important that we hide God's Word in our heart uh, so that when we do find ourselves lost, we already have that built-in reference point that God, God does want to make a way for us. God does want to give us direction. Um, and Proverbs 3, sort of our theme verse for this, reminds us of that. And so we'll just read this every week before we begin the devotion. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways. In all your ways. And so we're talking about we're talking about uh, what that looks like over the course of the, the next many weeks. Last, last time we were together, we talked about the integrity of our, of our heart and how that the Word teaches us that our steps of integrity actually lead to us uh, having our paths led by the Lord and, and our steps led by the Lord. So in all of our ways, in the ways of integrity of your heart and in all the other ways that we will talk about uh, throughout this devotion, in all your ways submit unto Him, and He will make your paths straight. Uh, and that's what we want, isn't it? We're, if we're in need of direction, we want Him to make our path straight. We want Him to give us guidance. Um, and, and He has promised to do that for us. Today we're going to be talking about the motivations of our heart and the motivations of our life, because our motivations certainly need to line up with um, with Scripture uh, and need to need to line up with with God's God's will for our life. And, and the Bible tells us when our motivations are, are pure that uh, it is it is one of the things that will help provide us direction in life. Proverbs sixteen two says, "All a person's way seems pure to them, but motives." are weighed by the Lord. But motives are weighed by the Lord. Uh, Philippians 2, Paul speaks of this. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking at your own interest. Uh, but each of you should look to the interest of others. Paul is saying, hey, everything that you do, check your motives, right? Uh, check your motives. Why, why are you doing it? Uh, many of you probably are familiar with Simon Sinek who, who wrote a great book on, on uh, beginning with the why and also gave a great TED talk um, that, that perhaps you have, have heard. And anyway, in, in Simon Sinek's um, uh, research, he, he said that in all of our lives, and, and he is, he's relating it more to uh, companies and, and businesses, there is sort of the what, what he calls the golden circle, right? And, and the uh, sort of three layers, if you can picture that, uh, or just sort of picture if you're from America, the Target logo, 
right? Are, are some of you salivating over the thought of a Target logo right now? Uh, so, and so that, that inner circle, if you can maybe picture a, tar, a, 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 a target with an inner circle, a, a middle circle, and an outer circle, um, that the, the inner circle would be, would be uh, the why, uh, why we do what we do. The, the, the middle circle would be how we, how we do it. And the, the outer circle is what we do. Uh, and, and Simon Sinek says that we, uh, most organizations, uh, most businesses tend to communicate from the outside in. In other words, they are always, or tend to be focused in on what they do, um, the, the product that they have. Uh, and, and, and he says for a business to truly be successful, uh, it needs to, it needs to be more focused on that inner circle of why they do it. Uh, for instance, a good, a good example of this, right, would be, um, well, any, any, uh, any business or any, any place that you would walk into, any company that you would walk into that is perhaps, uh, serving food or a place that would sell clothes, uh, you, can, you can see very quickly, right, uh, uh, businesses that sort of, sort of have, this, have this down. If you go into a food establishment and the, the people that are there um, are, are just, just come up to you, what do you want? Uh, maybe, it takes, maybe it takes 15 minutes for them to come to your table. Uh, and when they come to your table, it's not that they're very interested in you. Uh, then you tell them what they want. They come back five minutes later. Oh, we can't do that, right? Uh, or, or it seems like that they just don't even like the thought that you're there, but they bring you out this food. Here's your food. Uh, you say thank you. They're, they're, they, they seem totally disinterested that you're there. They think they're in the food business. Right, but but we would we would say you're really not in the food business. You're in the people business, and because you're so focused on the food, the what you're doing, you forget why you're doing it. You're doing this to serve the people that are coming in here to eat. Right, the same would be true at 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 Bice. Um, we we educate people. That's what we do. Right, but but why we do it is the people. Right. It's 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 yes, we want them get, given a world class education. But at the end of the day, it's not about that report card. It's about that person. It's about that student. We invest in those individuals that are that are here. Um, and I think the challenge for for any organization is to keep their keep their minds on why they do what they do. But the same is true for us as, as believers, right, that, that follow Christ with our life. If we are not careful, uh, we can become consumed on, on what we do rather than why we do it, how we live our lives rather than why, uh, why we, we live our lives uh, for Christ or why we make the decisions that we make. Um, our motivations will determine our direction in life. And I believe, I, I'm sure there are a lot of motivations we could have, we could have uh, had for this, but I, I've just got three that I believe can be very central to, to keeping us motivated in our faith. Three motivations that help us understand why we do what we do um, as, as believers. And I believe that if we get these down, that they will help us to maybe find God's direction when we're needing to make the difficult decisions in our lives, when we don't know which direction we go. I, I believe that if we are living our life with proper motivation in these, in these areas, that God will, God will give us his direction and we will find our steps being ordered by him. So let me give these to you. Uh, the first motivation is the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord. And, and, and I start with this because I, I think that it's, it's, um, it's perhaps easy to, to sort of steer away from this because we don't want to, we don't want to look, um, 
uh, we want to be careful, right, that, that we, we don't come across as, as legalistic in our ways or that we're not serving God out of, out of fear or judgment. At the same time, each of us as believers are to live with this holy reverence of the God we serve. And, and, and I believe that it should be a motivating factor in the decisions we make and in the things that we do in our day-to-day life. Romans 14, 12 says, So then each one of us will give an account to God Himself. I wonder what our decision-making would be like if we were motiva- motivated every day by the fact that the things that we do in this life, we're going to give an account to God for Sometimes I think that we, we forget about that as believers, right? Or we choose, we choose not to walk in a, in a daily understanding of that. Um, but when we, when we know that we serve a holy God, we serve a holy God who's not out to get us. He's not out to, he's not out to put a hammer of justice on us every day. Um, we don't have to serve Him in a legalistic way, but when we understand He is a holy God who one day we will stand before and give an account, I think it, it helps us to have a proper motivation in the way that we live our lives and in the way we make decisions on a daily basis. Our God is holy and our God is just. Ezekiel 3, uh, and I don't think I have this in your, in your notes, but, but I, I just think it's a fascinating little... Um, Uh, passage of Scripture. Son of man, I have made you a watchman over the house of Israel. When you hear a word from my mouth, give them a warning from me. If I say to you, if I say to the wicked person, you will surely die, but you do not warn him. You don't speak out of, uh, or you don't speak out to warn him about the wicked ways to save his life. Then the wicked person will die for this iniquity. Yet I will, I will hold you responsible for his blood. But if you warn a wicked person and he does not turn from his wickedness or his wicked ways, he will die for his iniquity, but you have saved his life. Man, when I read passages like that, like I I know it's Old Testament. I know some of you would say, well, we live under a new covenant. Yeah, but it's the same holy God, right? And, And I believe he has these holy standards that we need to remind ourselves of every day. Um, Psalm 33, 8, let, let the whole earth tremble before the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of Him. We want God's direction in life. We need to understand that He is the one. He is so powerful and so mighty, all right, that He sees everything from on high, from the beginning of your life to the end of your life. That's how powerful and amazing our God is. Um, And that's why He has the ability to give us direction in life. That's why He has the ability to guide us along life's treacherous way because He is so amazing, because He is all-powerful. So let us not forget that. Secondly, a second motivating factor for us as believers, which is more fun to talk about, is the love of Christ. Right, the love of Christ. I do what I do because of what He has done for me. Galatians two nineteen through twenty says, "I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved men and gave Himself for me." This was the great motivating uh, factor in in Paul's life. Right. And, and I believe when we are motivated by the love of Christ, when we are motivated by the love of Christ in our, in our decision making, uh, I, I believe that God, like God has a way of guiding us with his perfect peace, uh, as we express that, that love, uh, to others. Uh, I'm, we're not only motivated as we talked a moment ago by the reverential fear of God. But by the knowledge that, that someday, all right, someday, um, uh, we will stand before him and give an account to him for all that he's done. But we need to understand that we will stand before him as people whom he loved so much that he demonstrated his love towards on, on Calvary's cross. And he has called us to be, to, to not only be recipients of that, but to be givers of that, uh, to this, to this world.
The third motivating factor for us as believers, I believe, is the call of Christ. I do what I do because of what He has called me uh, to be. Because of what He has called me to be. Um, we're almost out of time, so let me just give you this quote. I, I love this by, by William Booth, uh, who founded the, the Salvation Army. He says, uh, not called, you say? Not heard the call? I think you should say, put your ear down to the Bible and hear Him as you go and pull sinners out of the fire of sin. Put your ear down to the burden, agonized heart of humanity and listen to its pitiful well for help. God, or, and God, stand by the gates of hell and hear the damned entreat you to go to their father's house and bid their brothers and sisters and servants, masters, to come there and then look in Christ's face whose mercy you have professed to obey and tell Him whether you will join heart, soul, and body and circumstances in the march to publish His mercy to a lost and dying world. Here's the reality for all of us. Sometimes we look at the calling of God as something that is reserved for a minister that will stand behind a pulpit and preach sermons every week. But the call of God is a call that is upon the life of every believer. And when we look at our life as not just an existence, but as a holy call by God, we realize that everything we do on a daily basis has been ordained by Him. And we're doing this to fulfill a call that He has placed on us. And when we look at our lives in that way, when we seek His direction to live out that call, I I feel that God has this amazing way of leading us and guiding us uh, through, through life, even in its most treacherous times, even in times where it feels like we are lost or we have lost our way, we find God's guidance. All right, so I want to challenge you today. I I know these are some very tough things perhaps, but I want to challenge you to live your life with this this overwhelming sense and and dedication to why you do what you do. Why you do what you do. Um, And be motivated. Be motivated. Not, Not afraid of God, but be motivated by the fear of the Lord as you live your life in reverence to Him. Be motivated by the love of Christ. We love because Christ first loved us. Be motivated by the fact that you are called by Christ. You are called by Him. You have a calling upon your life and you fulfill that every day as you live your life for His glory and in His name. And as we we live out the why in our life, I believe we find Him uh, or we find His guidance every day. So let's pray. God, we love you and we thank you so much that you have promised to uh, order our steps. Lord, you, you have promised to make our path straight. Would you help us, Lord, uh, to never get so caught up in how or what we do that we forget why we are doing this? Uh, and would you help us, Lord, to be motivated Uh, motivated by your love, by your calling, and by your holiness. And let us live our life according to that. We love you, and we thank you for this day. And uh, we thank you, Lord, for your direction in this life. In your strong name, amen. God bless you guys. Have a great day.